Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Shana Searcy. I'm so excited to paint with you today. We're going to paint, or I'm going to get started prepping my Bao Hong sketchbook here for just a quick and easy, super beginner friendly landscape tutorial. Now this is going to be for someone who's really new and just learning like water control and learning what your paints do dabbling a little bit with like wet on wet or wet on dry or for someone who is well experienced but sometimes we just want to paint like we have artistic energy we don't want to make a big plan for something we want to just experiment and play in our sketchbook and that is okay that is like what I live for some days is just to, you know, I have all this creative energy, but I don't really know how to channel it into a particular piece yet. Um, or I don't have an idea for a piece. I just want to paint something. Um, this project is going to be for that. So we are, I recently uh, was on the internet and just, I don't remember how I got here, but I was looking at the stuff in the, in the UK or over in Europe about like the super blooms that are going on in these fields full of just gorgeous wildflowers. And I somehow ended up also on like the two, you know, tulips are really big right now. Um, or just coming to the end of their season here in the, in the Northeast in the U S um, I ended up on the Netherlands and these fields of tulips. Anyway, we're going to paint a big field of flowers, but this is going to be not abstract because abstract means like you can't actually tell what it is, but it's going to be highly stylized, very loose. Um, you're going to be able to tell it's a field of flowers for the most part, but there's no detail in this. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is just plan out like overall composition. And this is going to be a really simple composition. Um, it's really just going to go on the diagonal. Uh, I'm going to start like up here and come down and just kind of cut my page in half. So this is my field of flowers. This is my sky. Okay. So I didn't want to do just straight across. I wanted to give it some dynamic, like look to it. However, all of my rows are still going to go in this direction rather than this direction. Okay. You don't need to draw this in. I'm just kind of penciling it in so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, you don't need to use a pencil at all for this if you don't want to. Um, so kind of my horizon line-ish, um, or at least the end of my field. And then this is going to be, um, actually I'm going to draw in one more line here. This will be like kind of the horizon line of like stuff in the background. It'll just be like green, greenery, whatever, very loose and sky. Okay, so that is the plan for composition. And we are going to be using super fun colors. So let's get into the colors. So these fields are like lush and bright and gorgeous with these gorgeous flowers. We're going to start with some sap green. Got to have some green in there. These beautiful buds and, and blooms sit on top of something and it's usually very green. Um, we're also going to use quadacridone magenta. We're also going to use dioxazine purple. If you don't have a purple in your palette and you have magenta and a blue, you can make a purple. Okay. You can make a gorgeous purple. Magenta is the best way for you to mix with a blue to get a very vibrant purple. If you're using things like alizarin crimson or other reds, you're going to get a very dull purple. So just keep that in mind. Um, and then last but not least, uh, we are going to use some cadmium yellow in there as well. So look at this super bright color palette. I love it with the green as the base. And then uh, not last but not least, all I'm going to use a little ultramarine blue in the sky. Okay, just to give it um, a bit of sky up there other than white. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to work from this way to this way on the angle. I'm not going to worry about the sky yet. I'm going to take some of my green. And this is wet on dry and I'm taking my brush and I'm just kind of running it in this direction, but I'm letting it skip a lot. Okay. So I'm just setting myself up. So this is the direction of my field. This is some greenery that's put down, but now we need to get that color in there. So let's pop in some color and some of this is going to be wet on dry. 
So this is dry, this is wet, and we're gonna let it do its thing. Okay, some of the color is gonna be bright and brilliant and stay exactly where I put it. And some of it's gonna bleed into the green I already put on there, totally fine. So this is where I say like, you can experiment a little if you're new and you don't really know what's gonna happen with your colors when you do wet on wet versus wet on dry. You know, this is a great project to start seeing what happens with low risk. You know, you're not trying to paint a full piece here today. Purple, the purple you can definitely dilute a little bit so it's not too dark that you're getting some of the brilliance of the color. There we go, row after row after row of purple, tulips, lavender, I don't know what's planted in here, but it's beautiful. All right, I'm gonna jump back to green for a little bit and I'm just gonna pop play with some darker greens and some texture. I am gonna pop some yellow in here so I don't wanna use up all my space. Put a bunch of yellow down here, I think. All right, so I have all these white spaces. Now yellow and purple, when they mix together, start to make a brown color. So just be careful of that yellow and magenta make a beautiful orange. So just be mindful. And then yellow and green make more green, <laughs> make more yellow green. And our yellow is looking very flat. I'm feeling compared to the other areas, but that's okay. I'm gonna add some green to it to give it some texture. So I'm working, I don't know if I mentioned this at the beginning, I'm working in my Baohong sketchbook. This is my favorite sketchbook right now, or my favorite watercolor journal. It is 100% cotton, 140 pound cold press paper in here. Um, I'll put a link in the description for where you can find these online. You can paint on both sides of the paper in here. They're reasonably priced for the quality. You know, they're not the super cheapest sketchbook you're gonna find out online there, but they're gonna make you super happy. Um, and they're not like astronomically expensive, like some out there that don't even have as good quality paper, honestly. All right, popping in more color. Now, we're getting to the point where I do wanna be careful. I'm probably gonna to wanna to let things dry a bit because things will start to get muddy and I want to preserve this poppy color. And as we get further away, things can get a little duller because they're further away, the atmosphere is interacting with them, We're getting a little hazy and fuzzy, so that's, that's great. Okay, and then this section up here, I'm gonna put very light green, and it's just kind of like grass fields back there. Maybe a little, a little blotch of pink in there. All right, it was a lot of splotch of pink, but that's okay. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry. I'm gonna put it in the sky and then I'm gonna come in and put in some texture. All right, so I'm back. Everything is dry down here or almost dry. This is definitely dry. We're gonna come in with some ultramarine blue. I'm gonna clean up a space here for me. Now we're gonna use this very sparingly. You can make your sky however you want, but I want it to be kind of a gray, more overcast day. So I'm gonna water this way down. All right, and I'm just gonna kind of brush in some of this blue rinse my brush off, let it be kind of wispy. You can leave some white spots for some wispy clouds in here. But I want it to be kind of hazy because when it's hazy and overcast and you don't have a bright, bright blue sky, actually things on the ground tend to look brighter. They pop better, they have diffused light. All right, so that's my sky and I got some 
smudge some gunk in it up here from my paper towel. So I'm going to rub that off. Perfect. All right. And now I'm going to go back here. I love this. I think it just looks great. I think we didn't have to do a lot of work to have a really dynamic piece. I think choice of composition helps versus straight back and forth, back and forth. Um, I love the bleeding out, the wet on wet. We're just going to go add a little more texture to some areas. So I'm taking my green and I'm just going to add in some darker. Let me get some more of this out here. Some darker textures of green kind of in between things. And if I did this while it was still wet before, it would have kept bleeding out and just not held its structure as much as I was adding these things in. I'm going to switch to a slightly smaller brush. I was using a size 12. I'm going to switch to a size 8 because I don't want these to be totally overwhelming. Just going back in kind of at the base of some of the rows to show that there might be a little space between of greenery. I'm using the tip of my brush and kind of pushing up. So this is a great way to experiment with uh, just brush technique, D using your brush in different ways, straight up and down, pointed, pushing up this way, using a lot of pressure, using a little pressure. You know, your brush is not a one trick pony. Your brush is dynamic. Your brush has lots of features to it, even though it looks very simple. This part stayed very light and I love it. I didn't get like a lot of color in there and I think it, it creates a place for us to like gravitate towards. I really like this color combination here and I kind of want to put green in the middle somewhere, but I kind of don't. I feel like it might ruin that party that's going on there. Maybe I'll put some out here on this side. And again, I'm going to take, so now I'm going to take my brush and I have paint in it, but it's pretty dry. So I'm going to kind of dry brush this light green color over the far fields here. So I have lots of texture. There we go. And even if you wanted to, let's say, all right, what colors do I have here? I have purple, I have magenta, I have green, I have yellow. I have everything I need to make a gray. Perfect. So I'm going to do a little purple and green with a little yellow. Make this gray color. Warm it up a little. All right, so I'm going to put just very light. You need a light color here because it's far away in the distance. I'm just going to put, I think my sky is dry. Yeah. I'm going to put like a little mountain range. Just because I can. And it doesn't have to even be anything like super significant. make it as big as you want. I'm getting carried away. Okay. So I put a little mountain range in the background to kind of anchor that edge. Let's take off our tape, even though everything isn't completely, completely dry. I think it's dry enough that we can kind of see our final product. So this is just super fun. I love this. I'm going to do this bigger. I'm going to do this on a big piece of watercolor paper, I think. And it's going to be awesome, even though it's so simple. I mean, it's not simple, simple. You do have to really use restraint and make some good choices about color placement and composition and how you're going to lay it out. But look at that. Look how fun that is, how much color 
how much texture we created and absolutely it's a beautiful landscape i love it so thank you so much for joining me for this super simple super easy um, landscape uh, tutorial but it's great for beginners again and also for intermediates and advanced painters who just want to get some of that creative energy out play with colors next to each other play with textures there's always opportunities to learn and to create um, dynamic images even with simple techniques so thank you so much i'm shana cersei don't forget to like and subscribe um, check out the description of this video for links to my materials like my bahong sketchbook watercolor journal as well as links to my studio crew classroom and uh, my social media so follow me on there all right everybody happy painting